The WWC uses the term baseline equivalence when determining whether the intervention and comparison groups were similar enough, that is, equivalent, on key observable characteristics before the start of the intervention, that is, at baseline. Why does baseline equivalence matter? Imagine a study in which the intervention and comparison groups scored very differently on a test before receiving the intervention. If the study also found that the groups scored differently after receiving the intervention, how would we know whether those differences were due to the intervention or to the fact that one group's members were already ahead before they received the intervention? If the groups were not similar when the intervention began, something other than the intervention could be causing any difference in measured outcomes between the groups. In other words, the estimated impact of the intervention might be biased. Recall from the attrition module, which is module 2, that bias is a systematic difference between the true impact of the intervention and the estimated impact, which can lead to incorrect conclusions about the effect of the intervention. The WWC assesses equivalence when there is reason to be concerned that the units in the analytic intervention and comparison groups may be dissimilar. Recall from the group designs and attrition modules, modules 1 and 2, that normally random assignment gives us confidence that the groups are similar or equivalent on observable and unobservable characteristics. But if the RCT has high attrition or compromised random assignment, the intervention and comparison groups used in the analysis may not be equivalent. For QEDs, the groups may differ because the study did not form them randomly. Therefore, we make no assumptions about their similarity at baseline. Because of these concerns about the similarity of the groups and the potential for bias if the groups are different, the WWC requires QEDs and RCTs with high attrition or compromised random assignment to demonstrate that the intervention and comparison groups were equivalent on observable characteristics at baseline in order to meet WWC group design standards with reservations. At best, these studies can only demonstrate equivalence on observable characteristics, and we don't know how much the groups may differ on unobservable characteristics. Therefore, these studies cannot receive the WWC's highest rating of meets WWC group design standards without reservations. One key point to remember is the WWC assesses baseline equivalence on the analytic sample using baseline data. The analytic sample includes the units that the study used to assess the impacts. In the example depicted here, the colors represent characteristics of sample members in both groups at baseline. The WWC uses baseline data to determine whether the groups were similar on certain characteristics before the intervention occurred. This study randomly assigned the sample members, but attrition is high. The analytic sample is the group of students illustrated on the right. The WWC does not assess baseline equivalence on the units that the study initially randomly assigned, the students on the left, because equivalence on the initial sample would not reflect changes to the sample through attrition. These changes could introduce bias to the impact estimates, which can only be detected by assessing equivalence on the analytic sample. That's why we assess equivalence on the analytic sample used to estimate impacts, the group on the right. The WWC assesses baseline equivalence on each outcome measure to determine whether differences at baseline were small, that is, the groups are equivalent, moderate, that is, the analysis requires a statistical adjustment to account for pre-existing differences in order to meet WWC group design standards with reservations, or large, that is, the groups were too different at baseline to meet WWC group design standards even with statistical adjustment. The WWC measures the differences between the intervention and comparison groups on a baseline characteristic using a standardized mean difference called an effect size. The effect size is expressed in standard deviation units based on the variation of the baseline measure in the analytic sample. The WWC standard for baseline equivalence establishes the relationship between effect sizes and the three possible equivalence results. This slide illustrates the standard. If the absolute value of the effect size at baseline is between 0 and 0.05 standard deviations, then we say that the groups are equivalent. 
if the absolute value of the effect size at baseline is larger than 0.05 and less than or equal to 0.25 standard deviations, then the WWC says that the study must use a statistical adjustment in the analysis to demonstrate equivalence. A statistical adjustment allows the analysis to account for the differences between groups that the study observed at baseline. We will talk more about acceptable statistical adjustments later in the module. And finally, if the baseline difference is greater than 0.25 standard deviations, then the WWC says that it does not demonstrate equivalence. The baseline differences are too large for the study to address with a statistical adjustment. The WWC calculates effect sizes in different ways based on the type of variables the study used to measure outcomes. For continuous measures, variables that have many possible values, such as standardized test scores, the WWC calculates hedges G. The WWC takes a different approach for dichotomous variables, variables with only two possible categories, also called binary or indicator variables, like whether a student is proficient in reading or not. For dichotomous variables, the WWC calculates Cox's index. Both of these measures express the effect size in standard deviation units based on the variation of the baseline measure in the analytic sample. We'll walk through how to calculate effect sizes in the next few slides. The WWC's study review guide has tools to assist with these calculations as well. For continuous variables, the WWC calculates hedges G to determine equivalence. Hedges G is a common effect size indicator. For a given baseline characteristic, it is the difference between the average of the characteristic for intervention group members and the average of the characteristic for comparison group members divided by the pooled standard deviation of the characteristic. The pooled standard deviation is the weighted average of each group's standard deviation. Here's the formula for hedges G, which includes an adjustment for small sample sizes. Note that in the formula, Y represents the mean of the outcome measure, N is the sample size, and S is the standard deviation for a group. The I and C indicate the intervention group and the comparison group, respectively. The effect size estimate is the difference in group means yi minus yc in the slide, divided by the pooled standard deviation, which is the quantity in the denominator with the square root sign. Notice the omega included here. This is a small sample size correction. Without it, the effect size estimate would be biased in small samples. This formula, along with all of the important formulas the WWC uses, is in the WWC Procedures and Standards Handbook. Let's walk through an example of how to calculate equivalence for a continuous variable. In this example, we have the sample sizes, means, and standard deviations on a continuous measure for an analytic sample at baseline. The mean in the intervention group is 25, and the mean in the comparison group is 20. The standard deviation is 10 in both groups. Plugging these numbers into the Hedges G equation, we find that hedges G is 0.5 standard deviations. This means that the intervention group average at the pretest is one half of a standard deviation larger than that of the comparison group. On this measure, the groups do not demonstrate equivalence at baseline, as the effect size is greater than 0.25 standard deviations. For dichotomous variables, which are those with only two possible categories, the WWC uses a version of Cox's index to calculate equivalence. Cox's index is designed to produce an effect size measure that is comparable to Hedges G, but the formula for Cox's index relies on more complex mathematical functions than Hedges G. Here is the formula for Cox's index. The formula includes logarithms, written as ln, and a calculation called an odds ratio. Without going into detail about the mathematical concepts, Cox's index applies a logarithm to the odds ratio for the treatment group, subtracts the same for the comparison group, and then divides by 1.65. Like the formula for hedges G, it includes a small sample size correction, denoted by the omega. 
You'll find more information about this formula in the WWC Procedures and Standards Handbook. This example walks through how to calculate Cox's index manually. In the example, 100 youth are in the intervention group and 50 youth are in the comparison group. The intervention group is 45% white, while the comparison group is 47% white. On this measure, the groups are equivalent at baseline, as the effect size is negative 0.048 standard deviations. The baseline differences fall within the acceptable range according to the equivalent standard, and the WWC would not require a statistical adjustment for the baseline difference.